Okay. Okay, so what's up guys? This is Akshay here. Let us see what the today's question is about. And today's uh, day is 400, uh, 403. So let us see what today's question says and how many approaches are there to solve this question. So we need to find the buy maximum stocks if I stocks can be bought on the i day. So it says that we have given stock prices uh, for n days where price of i units uh, denotes the price of the stock in the i day. There is a rule that the customer can buy at most i stock and the i day. And uh, the task is to find the maximum number of the stocks. And the customer is also given an amount k uh, initially. Okay, so for uh, these are the stock prices. That is 10, 7 and 19, right? And we need to take the one base indexing here. So this is one, this is two and this is three, right? So indexing says that at most you can buy a stock of price 19. The maximum quantity you can buy is three. Similarly for rest of the index indexes, right? And the ask is that you need to find the maximum stocks, buy the maximum stocks using this given money, right? So there are three things, maximum stocks, given money and the index, index thing, right? So clearly you can see that on day one, uh, the first stock is by, bought just once and then second stock twice and third stock uh, just once. And you get a total value of 43. So basically understanding what is here, we have maximum stock, we have given some money. And how much we can buy quantity of stocks, that is also given, right? Since I want to buy the maximum stocks with the certain amount of money, so uh, if we buy the lowest stocks, the lowest price stocks at max quantity, so our work will be If we buy the lowest price stocks uh, to the maximum quantity, whichever is available, then we can ensure, or then only we can ensure that our, uh, the stocks which we have purchased, uh, purchased would be the in maximum in number, in all the possibilities, right? So here for 10, 7, and 19, let us just sort this first of all in the ascending order. It is 10, uh, 7, 10, and 19 and have to get the indexes, the respective indexes as well. So this is nothing but representing quantity. This is nothing but representing cost of the stocks. So this is 2, this is 1, and this is uh, 3. Now my K is 45, right? So uh, the at most, the most uh, quantity, the maximum quantity for this stock I can buy is just uh, 2, right? So what I will do, I'll make it, uh, I'll buy the two stocks, 7 into 2, I'll just keep on subtracting it, right? So 45 minus 14 will give you 1 and 3. So I have the remaining amount as 31. Now, you can clearly see that this stock, again, I can back at max 1. But given the number, I have 31. So clearly, if this threshold was not given to me, I could have easily purchased two quantity for this stock price because I have money 31. Or is ki, uh, do ki price kya 20, so I'm easily purchase kar sakte. So that means we need to decide that how many units of stock you can get. So we have two possibility, right? First of all, you need to compare, you take the minimum of the quantity given to you. So I'm, I'm writing here quantity, right? With the, with the maximum amount you can purchase with the given money, right? So I have 31, I will divide it by price or let's say the cost of i right so here i am just finding the minimum of uh, 1 comma 31 by 10 right and i can see i have to find the minimum 1 comma 2 and that is 1 and that's how we are deciding which way to go on right okay so again i, I have bought one unit of this uh, stock which has price 10 so my remaining amount is what uh, 21 now again, I went at this stock and you can clearly see that at max I can buy three, but I don't have that much money, right? Uh, I have just uh, 21 remaining amount in which I can buy just one stock of rupees 90, right? So just 12 minus 19 and that's it. You will be have your remaining amount as two. And you can say that this stock was purchased in quantity two, this stock was purchased in quantity one, and this stock was purchased in quantity one. This is your final thing, right? So you just have to maintain this thing. That is to find the minimum and you need to sort it, right? Since we need to get the price and its index, right, which represents the quantity. So you need to make a custom payer data structure and sort it according to the cost. Now, please pause this video here. Try to make some more reference. And once you're satisfied with the logic and intuition behind it, please uh, try to code this approach by yourself.
Okay, so that's the code here in Java. I hope you have tried it. So we have a pair which has two parameters. This cost and quantity. It implements the comparable. So this is the same in our day-to-day -day, uh, previous problem, right? Here was maximum meeting. So there were three requirements, three parameters to be passed in one go. So that's why we have made for SE and the third parameter X. And we have sorted it according to the second parameter, that is E. Similarly, we have done, we have sorted it according to the cost parameter. Now, let us see the main code. We have a hair list of pair. You can also make an array here. And uh, we are passing all the uh, stock prices and its quantity into this pair. And we are just calling collection dot sort, sort array. And this compared to an implement comparable interface. Take care of that, right? And that's it. So we are going for iterating in the for loop. And then we are just checking that what is the minimum unit we can afford and we are getting it by the maximum quantity we can or we can take and with the minimum of the maximum quantity we can buy right so that's what so once you have got that particular units sum it into the answer and decrease that unit cost whatever we have purchased for the particular stock and at last return the answer that is it what is the time and space complexity here o of n log n takes for this sorting thing and rest thing is o of n so you can say at the worst it would be n log n and space as o of n because we have used the list pair here. Let us switch back to the C++ code. It's the same we have done in Java and C++. Let me just hit the sign button. And yes, that is done. Okay, that's done. So a few last things. Uh, you can start and fork my DSO repository mentioned in the description uh, with the link. And you'll get this all the source code there, right? You just do control F, type the question name and you will get it. And if you understood the problem and the solution and the solution behind it, do like, share and subscribe, support our community. Until then, we'll meet in the next video. Keep learning, keep growing, bye-bye and take care guys.